Hi, everyone. Welcome to Refreshed, a show where we highlight the wonderful people, work, and ideas on the internet. Today, I have an incredible guest with me, uh, Shannon Liao. Shannon, hi. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. I am so excited to be here. Yeah, I am too. Um, And I think I'm MinMax community is really happy to have you on. Um, So before we go ahead and introduce our topic today, um, do you want to like tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you working at? Um, What's like your relationship to games? Yeah, sure. Okay. I've been playing games since I was like five, maybe. Neopets was my very first first one of my very first games i think my very first game was like going to games.com or like fun.com and i was like what's on the website here um but i'm a video games journalist for cnn business uh and one of the only video games journalists there and i try to cover uh everything from like the latest consoles to the latest triple a games uh, and also like twitch as a culture too and internet culture so yeah yeah, and yeah. I mean, you really hold down the fort at CNN because you're basically, am I right? You're basically their only video games reporter. And then you report on things that aren't video games as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I cover like Twitch, uh, Mixer until they shut down soon, um, Facebook gaming, caffeine. So like all of that, like anything to do with gaming, I cover it. And before me, I, I, we would cover it here and there, especially like back in the year 2000, we covered it a lot, but not as much recently. So I'm definitely the only one. Awesome. Um, so as the chat's um, pointing out already, we're having you on to talk about Neopets today. Woo, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Neopets. Um, hi, Shazira. So let's start with, I think the question that's on everyone's mind. Um, and I even want to address this before we talk about what Neopets is, because that's actually like a long answer is, is Neopets still a thing? Like, (laughs) what is the current state of Neopets right now? Yeah, so Neopets is definitely still a thing. There are a lot of avid fans who still play the game. Um, but the website right now is a little wonky because Adobe Flash is discontinued like after this year. Like it's being phased out this year already, so it doesn't really work. You have to like go into your settings and fix it to even make Neopets.com work. So they're working on a mobile beta that's available right now to test. And there's also like a TV show in the works. And they've got a couple of things going. A TV but, show, yeah. yeah. I feel like Neopets has already like has always had like a lot of things going um for it that are outside of the game. And so is this TV show like do we know anything about it? Uh yeah, so it's supposed to be coming next year. Uh we don't know many details in terms of like the network, even like the plot. They say it's going to be, you know, adventures of some sort. Uh, they haven't finished production yet, so they just didn't tell me much about it. Uh, but they apparently are having talks with, like, so Jumpstart, the company that owns the OPS, is having talks with, like, traditional broadcasters all the way to, like, non-traditional, like, internet uh, types of uh, streaming. So who knows? We, we'll have to see. Yeah, and I bet COVID's impacting that as well. Um, so... Jumpstart is that where is that company based because I feel like are they is Neopets like their only thing um do you know yeah so Jumpstart it's really funny because I knew that before they owned Neopets uh, before they acquired it so Jumpstart has always been like an educational games company I think they're Mm. based in California I would have to let me just like double check really quickly so I don't get it wrong um yeah they're based in let's see Oh, it doesn't say. It, it's also fine. I was just curious if that was also like the original owner. So it sounds like Neopets has sort of been bought and now it's going to be sort of now it's in the state of being transformed right from flash to app. Um, yeah. And so yeah. can you log on to Neopets as it is right now? Yeah, you could definitely still log on. Um, I had trouble because my I couldn't remember my password because that okay. happens when you don't log on for five years. But uh yeah you can still log on you can still make a new account it's still functional it will like try to put you into the mobile beta which is kind of a rough experience but definitely still do it it's still around everyone in the chat can join um so this is a dark question but are your neopets alive (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, so, like, unlike Tamagotchi, they don't die, so, like... All right, you heard it here, folks. Neopets (laughs) never die. Webkins never die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you could, like, starve them. Sounds horrible, but you could starve them forever, and when they're, like, the hungriest, their hunger status is dying. So just, like, dying forever, but they don't actually die. But I, as a kid, I used to be, like, really scared. I was like, oh, no, like, mom, let me log on so I can check if uh, it's, it's my Neopet's dead or not. And so she would let me go on the computer at, like, 8 p.m. when I wasn't supposed to, just so I could feed my Neopet. <laughs> but, like, it was all a scam because my Neopet would never die. Yeah, yeah. But you got to keep your Neopets happy. Um, so that sort of brings us to, like, what is Neopets? If you were to describe, I know it's, like, many things, and that's why we're going to have an entire hour to talk about it today. But if you were to just, like, describe it briefly, how how would you describe Neopets? Yeah, so Neopets, uh, let's see. They're, like, animal hybrids. They're, like, all the different kinds of animals that you know, but, like, more creatively uh, drawn, more cuddly, and then you can get all these different colors and customize them. And that's the Neopet itself. And you can also give your Neopet a pet, which is called a pet pet. And they can give that pet pet another pet, which is like <laughs> a flea or something. And that's called a pet pet pet. Uh, and so it just goes on uh, uh, up to there. And, and you also, on the website itself, you have mini games. You have a bank so you can learn to save money as a kid. That was really helpful to me. Uh, you have an inventory <laughs> with your items. You can like collect rare items. You can sell them, resell yeah. them. And you just, like, communicate with friends, too. Like, there's a forum. Okay. And, yeah, it just yeah. goes on. I could continue yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. So it's, like, it's partially taking, you know, Tamagotchi style, taking care of these pets, and then also all these other kind of random aspects of it, like the market and the forums that will sort of get into mini games that will get into more depth. Um, mm-hmm. My whole thing is, like, okay, I'm trying to place Digimon... Pokemon and Neopets, how would you rank them? In terms of like my favorite Mm -hmm. or like in terms of like who would win in a battle? Okay, both. Okay, we're going to start with favorites or actually no, first who would win in a battle out of Digimon, Pokemon, I guess Pokemon's hard, depends on the Pokemon or Neopets. Yeah, I'm not too familiar if like Digimon, like are there like really OP Digimon? I feel like they are weaker than they're like not as strong. Yeah. I just always I was in the Yu Gi Oh ecosystem. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know because like you level up Neopets, right? Yeah, you can train them for ages. You can make your Neopet like like basically like a stage level uh trained like warrior. Like you could just keep training them, bring them to the academy, spending hours on them uh constantly but it's like manual like you can't just like send them to the academy and wait you have to like keep going back every few hours to check on them um which is so much work but then people really train it up to like the highest level i think a really fully trained you know, that could take on any pokemon or any digimon like i think it would be like at the top yeah yeah <laughs> i guess it just for all the answers it's like okay how well trained or like leveled up i mean digimon don't really level up but they have like evolution so it's kind of confusing yeah um oh yeah the smack just reminded me i forgot monster rancher um sorry you're right (laughs) um so okay um yeah so it's like animals and then it's all hosted on a website right oh yeah yeah so so that's the great thing about neopets is like any of my friends or anybody at all who doesn't have like a gaming pc or a console they can just like open Neopets on like a MacBook or something, and it would still run, and you don't need any processing power. You just need Adobe Flash. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, it's a Flash-based game, and there's actually a really interesting history behind Neopets, specifically like coding and web building. Like, could you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So one of the things that's like lesser known about Neopets is that it really just like shaped this whole generation of like women uh encourage people to like learn how to code and learn how to write better like it just like because the website is so text-based there's always like a a blurb at the top of the website to say like this is a mystical world um inside of neopia Mm -hmm. and then you would have to read that to understand what it was so it like really encouraged reading and writing for little kids Mm -hmm. uh who now have grown up to be you know adults like this game is really old so they're probably in their 30s now um 
And and also it lets you like code. So there's like a how to use HTML guide that I started like reading when I was like seven. Um, so like it just helped me and my friends like learn how to code websites like from the basics of like how to bow text or how to add a hyperlink. Um, and then people would just make their own pet pages. Like it's very free form. So every one of your pets gets their own page. And then you go into your pet page and you just design whatever you want. And if you're really advanced, you can make your website look amazing. Um, but also if you don't know how to start, there's people who made fan sites that you can just like grab templates off of and then start from there. It's almost like MySpace as well, which came mm-hmm. up at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like a pre it's interesting because it's a video game, but it does very much feel like a precursor to MySpace and Tumblr. Um, mm-hmm. as far as like, there's that whole culture of like making and building web pages and showing it off and like learning web dev essentially. Um, yeah. which is really funny to me because it is like a, a video game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is a video game, but you know, some hardcore video game, some gamers might not consider it one. Mm. Um, but also, I think the people who were playing Neopets might have just gone on to MySpace and mm. Facebook and also Tumblr. And there are, like, fan groups inside of Tumblr that are so obsessed with Neopets. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine there's, like, a lot of overlap in those sort of universes. Um, I'm going to go ahead yeah. and take some questions. So, okay. um, <laughs> Nate Zilli asks, Anna, would a Chow take better care of a another chow than sonic in shadow okay it seems like we're really fixated on the pets taking care of pets so we need to address this in more (laughs) depth um i think um a chow would not take better care of an it depends if it's a strong chow if it's like an s tier chow shannon have you played sonic adventure 2 ballard you know what a chow is Oh, no, I haven't. It's just like, actually, so on my Twitter, there's like the banner. It's like that little blue guy. It's literally yeah. those. Um, I feel like that is, it's just like a, this part of Sonic that has like a Tamagotchi aspect to it. Um, oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe you would be able to answer that better than me. Oh, no worries. Um, all right. So Bob Backwards is wondering... <laughs> Um, are you okay? So, are you a big Yu Gi Oh player? Um, he's wondering if you had a deck that you played. Yeah, I did. Um, I got the starter deck from Yu Gi. Obviously, I had to get his deck, and then I also got uh, Kaiba's deck, and then I combined the two, and then I kept buying booster packs throughout the years. But then, um, in high school, I was like, oh, I'm gonna give away all these cards to my friends. So I gave them all away. Wow. And he apparently like sold them to his cousin for a lot of money. <laughs> and I was like, can I have them back now? He's like, no, I already, I, I don't have it anymore. So uh, yeah. That's, that's criminal. But, that's just taking advantage of your good Yu-Gi-Oh! Win. Yeah, but you can still play Yu-Gi-Oh! online. So I've done that as well, like Battle.net. And I've even seen people like playing it in the library, like <laughs> little kids playing it. So. That's really yeah. cute. Um. Yeah. One time, this is like a ginormous tangent. Um, when when I was in first grade, um, this was like the legendary story that went around. Is there was a an eighth grader who um, there there was this preschooler who had like all five pieces of Exodia, the forbidden one, and mm-hmm. there was this like eighth grader, and he went to this kindergartner who had these really good Yu Gi Oh cards, and he was like, "Hey, like I'll trade you um, this wood chip for like these." five Yu-Gi-Oh cards and the kid's like no way that's like a wood chip you like picked it off the ground and he's like no it's ancient and like ancient was written on it in pen and the kid was like oh okay and they swapped um Uh, he got scammed (laughs) yeah actually that happened to me too um I had Dark Magician Girl and then my friend also had Dark Magician Girl but hers was like uh, fake copy oh. but she was like want to trade and I was like oh yours has cool splasher I've never seen that before she's like yeah it's a limited edition one so I like traded her and later I was like this card doesn't look real the Konami is like off mm-hmm. and, like the little symbol is like not sparkly so I'm like this is a fake card <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. yeah um yeah, I feel like that was a really big part of like that occupied a big part of my childhood is thinking about how do I find fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards and what if this is a fake Yu-Gi-Oh card? Um, yeah, um, apparently there's like a little sparkly uh, little square in the corner that can like 
verify if it's a real card or not. And but people just kept making counterfeits, uh, especially like if they had Chinese characters and not Japanese, you would know that it was a fake card. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, let's see here. So Psyduck's wondering who's the best Neopet. Um, I'm not qualified to answer this. That's really hard. I mean, if I say something, everyone else who like likes another Neopet will be angry at me. Uh, but like, there's no like definitive best Neopet. I like the Uni. Like, I always like the Uni because it's based on Unicorn. <clears throat> but I don't like like the girly like nice regular version. But I like the one that's like Tyranian. So Tyrania is like the land inside Neopets that's inspired a uh, like prehistoric caveman. So it's like a prehistoric caveman unicorn. Uh, that's my favorite one. <laughs> um. I just remember, so, like, I actually didn't play a ton of Neopets, but I loved the Neopets McDonald's toys. So I feel like I, um, yeah. <laughs> I based, you, okay, I, I based my favorite Neopets off of that one. So, like, I don't know, I think there was, like, a green dragon that I really liked and was, like, kind of rare. And I was like, oh, this is my favorite Neopet. Um, yeah. And I would, like, beg yeah. my parents to go to McDonald's so I could get, like, a tiny Neopet plushie. Uh, yeah, I used to collect them too. I don't know what happened to my Neopets, but I love that. It was like the height. That was definitely the height of Neopets. Like when it was the most popular, it had TV ads. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, knew what it was. And mm -hmm. like, if you went to school, everyone was playing it. And like during, I had, I don't know if you had computer class in elementary mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. but we would just only play Neopets. I don't know mm -hmm. why. We just had like a free hour to play. Uh, and so yeah, so that was like the best time. And then Neopets went a little bit downhill there. But, um, um, then yeah. Tom was like, so what's the story of Neopets? Is there like an origin story? I'm not really sure. Um, I think because like now it's <laughs> being bought and sort of like re-updated and it's always like hard sometimes to track that history. Do you know like anything about founding it? Do, do you mean like the website being created or like the origin of the lore of the website? Like the lore uh, honestly, the game? Honestly, <laughs> um, either. <laughs> Okay, okay, because the lore inside the game, I can't remember, but there's a whole encyclo encyclopedia inside the game that you could, like, read to reference, like, year zero, zero, when everything was founded. Uh, but for the website itself, it was founded by, like, like a few college kids, uh, Donna, Adam, uh, Donna Paul and Adam Paul uh, in the UK. So, like, everything on the website is British spelling. Okay. Uh, so, I, like, grew up learning, like, color with an extra U, favorite with a U. Fairy spelled as F-A-E-R-I-E. -E, and I was, like, writing that in my English homework for school. And they'd be like, um, you've misspelled everything, Shannon. What happened here? But, <laughs> uh, yeah, so so that's, like, the two people who founded the website. That's so why there's, like, this charm and, like, this, like, indie kind of flavor to it all. Um, but then they sold it off to Viacom, I think, in, might have been 2005. Um, and then after that, uh, it was acquired by Jumpstart. And okay. Jumpstart is now owned by a Chinese company. Okay. Uh, but that was, like, more recent history as well. So Yeah, I'm really curious to see where Jumpstart will take it. I mean, so, like... Neopets used to be such a robust franchise in that it's like, it's not just like a game slash website, but like there are the toys and there's the magazine, right? Like you were telling me earlier that you subscribed to the Neopets magazine. Yeah. Yeah. I was so happy for that. Cause like, I would, you know, like my parents get all the mail and I don't get any mail, but then I'm, now I'm like, oh, there's Neopets magazine coming every single month. I can look forward to that. Um, and it would have like a beautiful like cover with like, it's all, almost like holographic of like the different characters. There's so many beautiful characters uh, as Daniel Pets. And like, I remember distinctly, like there was one issue with like Illizen, who was like this uh, fairy of nature with like orange hair with like green highlights. And so she was like the cover of one magazine. And there would just be like these like little issues about like, oh, you can go to this land and try this cheat code and try this and I was like oh now I have all these tips so I can get even better at this game yeah was it sort of like um like tiny guides yeah it was like guides it was a lot like uh what you see in Game Informer now but yeah. just only dedicated to nail pets yeah so yeah that's super cool like I remember getting like Pokemon guides like for some games being like wow this is so cool I know exactly what to do but like it's part of the excitement is like knowing that you won't get stuck but then also like these guys are just so pretty like these magazines are just so pretty um and yeah. i imagine like a lot of care went into like making neopets magazine 
Yeah, yeah. I used to like want to work there as a kid. I just like didn't know how I would do that. But yeah, there's like definitely a lot of like dedicated artists uh, back in the day. That also like changed over time too, because there would be like famous Neopets staff members mm. that like then left the company for some reason, hmm. but we don't really know why. And there was like somebody named Snarky who was very snarky, uh, and there was Droplet, who <laughs> original, would, like, incredible, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then, like, Droplet would approve all the Neopets, like, um, newspaper submissions and, like, take care of that whole thing. And then they left, and we only have a couple of, like, the original members left at at Neopets, but... Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely the end of an era. In addition to the magazine, then, there's the Neopian, am I saying that right? The Neopian. Yeah, the Neopian Times, which is, for folks who aren't familiar, it's like a virtual newspaper completely inside of um inside of neopets so Mm -hmm. uh could you tell us about your special relationship with the neopian (laughs) times yeah Uh, neopian yeah yeah so so neopian times it was really cool because like the way that it's named it sounds like the new york times but it's just like for neopets i don't think that was all purpose it's just like a coincidence mm-hmm. um so i always thought like i want to get published in here how do i do it um and this is like even before i had a career in journalism it's like when i was in fifth grade i was like okay i'll mm-hmm. submit a short story there um but i wrote about like my pets and i walking around in fairyland and it was like very unoriginal and i ended the story with like and then they all woke up and it was just a dream <laughs> Um, so I submitted that and like the feedback I got from like a family friend was like, you shouldn't end stories with it. It was just a dream. Cause then the reader feels duped. Cause like I read all of this, but nothing happened. It's all fake. Um, uh, but anyway, I submitted that and <laughs> it was rejected. And I was like, how can I get into the Neopian times? Like they'll never let me in. I tried again, like back in like, I think high school, I tried again and I just got in really easily. It must've been like the years of experience yeah yeah and now now you're at cnn so when you applied to cnn business you're like hey um i i have bylines at the prestigious the neopian times is that a part of your portfolio oh my god uh no it's not but one uh, (laughs) carpenter at polygon was like trying to write her article about neopian times i was like hey i also got published (laughs) so i just like it's something I just bring up to brag about. I don't really. <laughs> I do that. I feel like that's like major, um, like early two thousand. I don't know. Like that's really amazing bragging rights. Um, <laughs> what was the winning submission? What got you in? Yeah, um, I wrote one story. It was about like feel. It was like a short story about this guy who like is running for a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> and he feels like oh it's not really working out i have to leave my boss is kind of weird and so he just leaves and it's like he's very sad he's like the, the the short story is called a violation of the contract because i'm because this guy's violated the contract to leave his job so it was like based on my internship experiences <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say sounds completely unrealistic unlike anything that would ever happen in a news yeah job. it was just like an angsty piece of like oh Man, I like this company, you know, but like it just didn't work out. And then, so that was like the winning piece. But then I actually tried again because um, Neopets would do this special thing where like every issue that's like 400, 500, 550, you would do a special edition. And so if you write something with a theme of like 550, you could have a higher chance of getting in. Mm. So for issue 550, I was like, I'll write about the 550 cafe. And it was this like fantasy idea of like, a magical cafe where you can order whatever you want to eat. You can order like apples with fries and they'll make it for you. And I don't even know like what <laughs> really happens in the story after that. But yeah, so that was, that was actually quoted by the Neopian times. So I that's... made the quote of the day. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So like, that's yeah. honestly like not only were you published in the Neopian times twice, but you were like the featured <laughs> writer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they really make a big deal out of it because you get like a nice shiny trophy on your okay. profile page, like called your user lookup. So <laughs> it's like pretty good. That's amazing. Um yeah. so let's see here. Um yeah. oh thanks for the sub Joe Beezer. <laughs> um just catching up on some chat here. All right, so Psyduck424 asks, how many flash games were there 
Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I bet we can't. Yeah, right. Yeah, and there's also like a graveyard for the ones that didn't make it that got retired for whatever reason. And there's a a land inside Neopia called Haunted Woods, which is like the Halloween themed land. And then inside that land is the graveyard for the Flash games that didn't make it. <laughs> um. Yeah, as Sidex says that the gaming library inside Neopets is so underrated. It's wild to think about like Flash games and, you know, it's going to be really sad if they don't get preserved. But then Neopets is like its own. Yeah, it's like it's a, its own thing of Flash games. What were like some of your favorites at the time to play? And like, what were they like? Were they like puzzle games? Were they like Mario ripoffs? Like, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different kinds. They all seem to play on like the arcade style games. Okay. Um, but some of the people in chat have mentioned like Mercury Chase was fun. I think that's a little a little bit like uh, I think it's like Snake. If I can recall correctly, it's like the one where oh, you yeah. chase a bunch mm-hmm. of like negs, which are basically like Easter eggs, but they're called negs, and you just like eat each neg to get longer and longer until you like end up losing because uh, you fall into yourself. And then there's like one called Fairy Bubbles where you like just shoot bubbles Mm -hmm. until you like match them all and they fall down. And there's like so many cheat codes for that game, which was really fun. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and that's what I really love about Neopets is that like, it's not just a game, it's a game inside a game. And also there are cheat codes for that specific game. Or like, it's not just a Tamagotchi. There's a Tamagotchi, but then you can get a pet for the pet for the pet. <laughs> yes, yes. And then, like, all the Flash games are also helping you, like, advance your Neopets because you get Neo points when you get a high score. Like, even if you get, like, a low score, but if you get a high score, you get more Neo points, and then you, like, take that money back, train your Neopet, buy it food, keep it sheltered, <laughs> all the things. Um, so, of course, all this talk has prompted some conversation in the chat, and Staple Pie is wondering, is there a way to get my old Neopets account back? I'm sure people have sank, like, hundreds of hours into it. Is there, like, a way to get them back? Yeah, I had the same problem. I, like, lost my first account after a couple of years. I forgot the password. And I was like, oh, I threw the password away. So I made a new account, and then I was playing on that for a couple of years, but I had already, like, submitted a password recovery request for okay. the first account. So, like, many years later, after playing the second account, they emailed me saying, here's your password for your first account. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll have both. I'm back. Um, but, yeah, they actually have, like, a Zendesk. They have a regular support team. So okay. I was able to get in contact with them this time around and, like, get all the passwords. Like, you just have to like, keep trying like yeah um i'm curious like i wonder do you know like it does anyone know like how big of a team neopets is like maintaining that like yeah it doesn't seem too big i don't have the exact numbers but it seems like either smallish or medium-sized okay. uh yeah okay. it's, it's still like a, a division inside of jumpstart which yeah. is then another company owned by mm-hmm. a bigger company so mm-hmm. it doesn't have that many resources okay so like maybe like sub 20 would you say sub 50 like we won't we won't hold you hard on this like i don't i don't know you don't know probably yeah. under under 200 people okay That's okay yeah. okay i was like small medium my idea of small medium is like way off you can tell it's oh, like oh yeah like 500 is medium okay so, yeah. yeah i'm like very influenced by my background in indie games yeah. um all right yeah. so um Hugo 2P asked, did they talk about the plots? They were the best part of that. Is that like referencing? What's that? Let's, let's talk about the plots. I just saw you. Cool. I just saw you like light up. That's amazing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's... Because like, yeah, because we were talking about Neopens, but like if we don't talk about the plots, like we left out like the most, like the funnest, like most unique part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I kept going back to like, besides talking to my middle school friends and like high school friends, but like the plots are like um, these like, campaigns almost uh oh. with like web comics attached that would like keep getting released every week so you have to like keep tuning in um but it's also like you're so involved in it too so basically it's really hard to describe but it's a plot like a plot and a story um but like things are happening in neopia maybe like an alien evasion is occurring maybe there's like somebody got kidnapped and you have to rescue them um or like somebody went missing uh, like something happened that like is risking like it's like a war between two lands like something serious is happening so everybody on the website has to help out with this like campaign and they have to contribute okay. by doing like puzzles 
mini games like quests and like looking around the site for clues to figure out what happened even and like you get a webcomic to see like oh the plot is progressing as you're contributing Mm -hmm. um and then it's like a limited time thing so you really have to just be there you can't just like stop playing Neopets for five years and like miss out on everything yeah you're there all the time and then eventually at the end of the plot you get like a reward shop opening up okay and all your contributing points um you can use them to like get cool items and special uh like avatars like things that like signify your participation and you also get like a really nice trophy so i have trophies from like 2000 five six seven <laughs> from like the, how, the old plots how long would these plots like last like these campaigns oh uh, i think like each of them were like a couple weeks yeah if I remember. okay yeah. but there was one plot called the altador plot which people who missed it could still participate because it would like it would it just always uh was on the site as a mm-hmm. feature so i think mm-hmm. even now you might be able to still participate because they just never like uh archived it so that one is a special one. I, I remember you just, like, go around and you, like, tap on different statues inside okay. of uh, Altador, which is, like, a Greece, almost, like, pseudo Greece, And you're, like, looking for clues in the statues. And, yeah, it's just, it's just a, lot, a lot of fun. Um, okay. So I'm trying to think, because um, people are talking about how, like, they wish that there was a modern version of Neopets, you know, probably besides, like, what's out there, which is, like, the old version of Neopets, and it is getting updated. But I'm kind of, like, thinking about what would be the most, like, the closest modern example of Neopets right now. Like, it is strange that a lot of these aspects of Neopets, like, have sort of been divided up into, like, separate interest groups, right? Like, you have Tamagotchi, which is just taking care of of like pets and you have modern Tamagotchi versions, like which you've also covered. And then there's also, um, you know, like Tumblr or MySpace where it's like just the website, but I really don't think there's like anything that's not Neopets that does all of that today. Like, can you think of anything? Um, yeah, it's really hard to think of a substitute. I think that's why like the, there's a loyal fan base still that mm-hmm. still comes back to it. Yeah, like, that's a good point. In 2018, there was like a Comic-Con event for Neopets and people showed up to that. <laughs> and they like got free Neopets merch. I was very salty. I didn't get to go. But uh, <laughs> like that, it still draws people in because there just isn't a substitute for that. I mean, you can find like communities obviously in every mm-hmm. game and you can try to like piece it together. Yeah. You can make a discord and like mm-hmm. have people talk there and then play your game together. But yeah. it's like that social element isn't really built into a anything pet modern. Yeah. Caring game. Yeah. yeah. King Prometheus is wondering were there any Neopets knockoffs? Um, <laughs> yeah there were a couple i honestly forgot all their names but there were a lot of pet virtual pet games around the same time i think i played some of them none of them were like too compelling for me yeah um, um yeah i just like don't know what happened to them does I'm- webkins count as a neopets knockoff i think i might like uh inflame some people uh <laughs> if i dare to claim that webkins is a knockoff but maybe a better way to think about it is like neopets did actually go on to inspire a lot of games after it because like right webkins is just is also a flash i think it's flash based maybe it's java um flash based like tamagotchi like game um i'm trying to think of other stuff i played yeah Um, yeah i don't I don't I honestly, I mean, at the same time as Neopets, I was playing Club Penguin. I was oh, playing yep. Guy Online, yep. and I was playing Maple Store, and they're yeah. all pretty different. Yeah. And then the other pet games, I don't remember them yeah. anymore. Yeah. That's just how, like, obscure they are now. Yeah. Well, and you were sort of like, you're steeped in sort of those, that era of, like, online games, because, I mean, you've also written extensively about Maple Story and like the community there and like would you ever say that there's kind of like something special about the neopets community because like you've been involved in so many and like you're still right like involved with maple story yeah i think for neopets like like i said like inspired like this generation of like coders and writers Mm -hmm. like the people there honestly are very literary they might like be down to talk about like yeah i mean they made us see it every reporters (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, but, like, other people, too, like, other people, besides yeah, me, yeah. like, other people, like, yeah. talking, like, I would write, like, some kind of, like, 
little bit of fiction about mm-hmm. like my original character and they would write their bit of fiction and we would like pass it on to each other we would be pen pals like we were just like random strangers on the internet like willing to do that and that's not the case with like a lot of communities like a lot of other games like you don't really write anything you're just like i'm gonna shoot a bunch of people and then i'm leaving <laughs> i don't <laughs> yeah. talk to you yeah, yeah. so yeah uh did i answer your question yeah, I think you did. Um, let's call it answered. Um, a Reese of Cake says, I played... Z- <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even read this without laughing. I played <laughs> Zeta Pets at the time, which I guess it's probably really similar. Um, I wow. bet... Have you heard of that? I feel like I'm sure like there were a lot of similar things, um, you know, like happening yeah Um, yeah it sounds familiar i think i might have played that too but sometimes it's like hard when you're young and like you're just like on you know like yeah i just remember i was on a ton of neopets knockoffs and we're all like uh this is not as fun Uh, what is this (laughs) and well and sometimes it can depend on your social group like i feel like you know, if Zeta Pets is in in your specific, you know, group of friends and like you're going to play Zeta Pets. And I think that is an interesting aspect like to these communities is that like sometimes your relationship to these games or oftentimes is influenced by like your real life communities, even though it is like an online Internet community. Yeah, um, like, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Like I would have one friend I barely ever talked to except to talk about game pets. Yeah. And and it's like I was able to talk to like random classmates because of Neopets. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, yeah, if everybody had been playing a different game, I obviously would have gone to that instead. Yeah, so it really makes a difference. Well, and vice versa too. Like these games can also m- help you make friends, like IRL too. I don't know if you mm-hmm. want to talk about this, but I, would, I, you have written on like dating scenes in like online <laughs> games, like Maple <laughs> Story, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that, honestly, uh, like I, lo- I, that's some of my favorite. Like it's just so interesting. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so I wrote like I wrote fiction for The Verge uh, before I left. Uh, I made sure I wanted to like because they take fiction. I was like, I yeah. have to get this. this yeah, in and you were book. staff there for a while also doing games reporting and other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there for two years yeah. um, and I would just write about Neopets, League of Legends, Maple Story because I was like, these are the ones. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> so so for like fiction, I was like, oh, I'll base this on kind of like my experiences. Um, seeing like people around me in Maple Story, like getting into real relationships, getting married even, having kids, like moving in together. Um, and then for me personally, like, my ex-boyfriend, uh, I met him in Maple Story, and yeah, like, it was, it was weird, because we didn't know each other in person, and then we just, like, talked to each other via uh, Maple Story, yeah. and then via this guild that we were in, and then just, like, we're like, oh, we're both in New York, let's take a chance, and hopefully you're not a serial killer, let's see what it goes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the other way people are meeting each other now. I don't think it's that unusual. People are definitely doing that in World of Warcraft, for instance, like getting married and having their anniversaries. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's just like maybe somebody not in gaming would find that really odd or like like newsworthy too, but like it's become pretty common now at this point. Yeah, well, and I think like it makes sense, right? Because you already have that shared like interest and you have a shared pastime and I feel like a lot of healthy relationships like you share like an interest like that so it's like if you're going to spend a lot of time gaming and you're playing a specific game and you're already playing that game with someone I mean it's kind of like one of the best starting points that you can build off of um yeah yeah and also um like games like Maple Story and Neopets are very social so it's not just about mm -hmm. like like, I would find it, I know people have done it, but I think it's harder to, like, maybe date somebody just based on meeting them in League of Legends, for instance, <laughs> or, like, PUBG. Like, it would be, because it's so fast-paced, like, mm-hmm. how are you going to really yeah. talk to them? Um, but Maple Story, like, or, you know, it's so slow-paced. You're just like, okay, I'm going to bond over you with, like, a couple of things we're doing today, the dailies. That's another thing that the, all these games kind of have in common is, like, yeah. You have to log on every day to check on your Neopet to feed them, and yeah. also you got to do all the different dailies that give your uh, like move your account forward, like get the Neo points, make your Maple Story character OP, like all the things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas like I was really flaky with my 
first RuneScape boyfriend. <laughs> I have like very, I have very vivid memories of like going to like the town square and just typing, looking for boyfriend that must have mithril armor or above. <laughs> I'm like wearing <laughs> co- copper armor. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Maple Story was like, I also had a similar thing where like, this is like, this is like sad, but I was in like third grade and this like random guy was helping me out. Like, level my character a bit more mm. and then he was like hey i love you and i was like ew, ew <laughs> gross. he was like i thought we were like getting somewhere i was like no 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 like no. Um, i'm, I'm no. just using you <laughs> like bye <laughs> yeah you don't know this but i'm like 10 <laughs> yeah i'll i'll someday i'll write a letter to all my uh runescape sugar daddies <laughs> yeah. oh my god Is that- um <laughs> this is like sh- <laughs> this is shifting gears majorly. Um, yeah. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Oh no! I can I like point something out? In oh the yeah, chat yeah. That I want to talk about. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Psyduck four two four says Advent calendar. Advent calendar. Um, I didn't even know like what an Advent calendar was before Neopets because it's like my first exposure to one. Yeah. And then like afterward, I realized like oh, it's a real concept in the real world. Like yeah. you can get, you can like order a calendar and like open each day to get mm-hmm. a new present. The same thing in Neopets, but you would log on every day in December and get a present, a random huh. item, or like. I wonder Neopets. if the makers were like, real, like, okay, so I'm Catholic, and so that's something we do. I don't know if like all Christians do that, but we'll slowly figure out who's behind. <laughs> and so, wait, sorry, so I interrupted. So, like, oh no, I I was that was that was it but yeah. that was like every time even if i quit neopets i would come back and be like oh it's december i have to log on come i have on. to get the present yeah so. i wonder like does that do you think that sort of is made to a like who is the audience of neopets um like do you think that that would be something you know for like a specific group i'm just imagining like christian uh, like youth groups getting together and <laughs> <laughs> playing Neopets. Who like what is the Neopets player base? Yeah, if, it's fifty percent uh, America. Okay, uh, around fifty percent. I just okay. like asked the CEO of Jumpstart recently. Yeah, um, and uh, the rest is like scattered across the world. Yeah. but it's predominantly English speaking countries. I'm thinking okay. like the demographic might be similar to the demographic for Harry Potter. Oh, even. interesting. Um, yeah, it could be because of like the literary connection and like yeah. Um, I'm just thinking like my one friend in middle school who loved both. Uh, yeah, and she was also Christian, so maybe I, I have no idea, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's also like a very family friendly game. Mm-hmm. Like especially after it got acquired by Jumpstart, it was like like super <laughs> aimed at like young kids at that point. And then the people who were like aged up were like, please make it more adult. I, I'm old, I'm older now. I don't want to play like a children's game. Yeah. So it, it's like yeah, trying that makes to sense. strike the balance. Yeah. Well, and it's like, I'm, I mean, with any game like that, you're never going to know specifically who they're like targeting or marketing for. But that is really interesting. that <laughs> They had an advent calendar. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, Adam Walker, Texas Ranger, asks, why do you think Neopets faded in popularity along with other similar games in their respective online communities? Do you, like, have any uh, thoughts? Yeah, so so when Viacom acquired Neopets, people were really sad about that. Um, but it wasn't, like, until it was acquired by Jumpstart that people were starting to, like, say things like, there are like parts of this website that are broken, like it's not working anymore. Like I specifically remember the choose your own adventure, like uh little you can you can basically code your own little adventure. I mean, it's not too much coding for that because mm-hmm. it's just like text based, but you basically like you write your own little adventure and then choose the options and people can play through it. But like once Jumpstart acquired it, this feature was broken. <laughs> Mm. And so my game from like that I wrote before before the acquisition uh, just didn't work anymore, and I submitted a support ticket and never heard back. So it was like small things like that that just like slowly like chipped away at people's like love for the game. Yeah, and felt, like yeah. What do you hard. think like would bring you back like hardcore? Like I am playing Neopets every day. Is there like anything that you think would do that? Yeah, I think they just need to move the site off of flash because right now it's still running on flash it's still really hard to use so once they do that which they're still in the process of doing um 
And then if, like, I could talk you into playing it with me, I could talk my other friends yeah. into playing with me, then obviously I'll just go back there. Um, it's actually been kind of hard because I've been playing Terraria with some friends. And okay. One of my friends had, like, a computer issue where she, like, couldn't move in the game at all. Mm, I'm like, yeah, it'll be easier to play Neopets with her. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, that is nice. I didn't think about that because, like, sometimes playing a live game multiplayer in that way, you know, whether it's Terraria or... Um, you know, like a, a Fortnite or PUBG, whatever, like mm-hmm. requires a, a strong computer and a strong internet connection. But it'd be really cool yeah. to get a game like Neopets again, where people can like play together, but like they don't need, it's it's not as demanding like that. Yeah, right? I, I think this has like come up, be- especially because of the ongoing pandemic is like, because mm-hmm. of that, like we've all been forced to see how good is our internet, how good mm-hmm. is our infrastructure mm-hmm. and our computer. And like, I have a pretty good setup, but uh, other people like did not plan to work from home at all. And they were like, oh, I've been using a mobile hotspot. Now mm-hmm. I'm screwed. I don't know what I'm going to do here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So they just have to like, kind of, you know, either buy the hardware or like, just don't play. And a lot of people have chosen to like, just not play any video games right now because they just don't have the resources. Yeah. We have a lot of people in the chat talking about Adventure Quest. Have you pl- wait? Yes. Is Adventure Quest is yeah, that? We is played that- it together. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll, I feel like we need to tell the story of Adventure Quest, our personal journey. It was like we were just just like hanging out, and we're like, "What do we play tonight?" And it's like going through just on Steam, filtering out like free games that are multiplayer. Yeah, yeah there just aren't that many like ones that look too compelling uh, but adventure quest was a big one mm-hmm. and you, then, yeah oh, oh do you want to go do you want to say it or should i oh no i'll give you a break okay so okay. here's here here are the deets is that we so we were just like looking for a game to play found adventure quest um started it did the tutorial, found each other, went through that whole dance of like, wait, how do you add someone again? Oh, I think you do that. It's in that menu, blah, 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 blah. Added each other um, and just went up to like the info person in the square and was like, okay, we'll just like see what they tell us. And accidentally accepted a quest. And all of a sudden we're like, uh, holy crap, we accepted a quest. We're going somewhere right now. Um, and we get there and it's like a live concert. <laughs> um with a knockoff who what do you think would be like the band I, like were they that's like that's what i was gonna ask you it's like a t- early 2000s rock band yeah like maybe nickelback yes nickelback yeah, yeah. The, so go. let's go with it nickelback impersonators <laughs> in <laughs> in adventure quest and we were just like there and the characters had this really fun animation with a little dance and we're like oh we're dancing we're at this concert even though we're like in the middle of the pandemic like you know, yeah, it was kinda... nice to be in a virtual concert. It was exactly. cool. Cause, yeah, I didn't like it was like, oh, Travis Scott just happened in mm-hmm. Fortnite, but look at this Nickelback impersonating <laughs> concert much better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like the local equivalent um, yeah. of the big name Travis Scott Fortnite concert. Um, yeah. But then all of a sudden, we were <laughs> brand new to this game, and then we just like pan the camera, and like there are monsters behind us, and it's like people are fighting the monsters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had just, no idea. There's like random like dinosaur looking raptors like coming at us, and we're like, wait, so we're gonna be fighting them? But then the singers are just performing, like nothing is happening. So it's like we're watching the concert while also like slashing away at monsters. And yeah, to survive. Yeah, and then. <laughs> Yeah, we survived through it. It was like really easy, which was good because like we were level one. <laughs> <laughs> what an experience! It was good. I want to go back there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, and it sort of makes me think like it would be cool to have Neopets as like I, I don't know, like a downloaded game that maybe I could also play offline. I don't know, yeah. like if that would ever work. Like if you can do mini games offline, like get that money yeah. and then when you log on it sort of like syncs up maybe that's like too much but i am curious to see you know like where they take neopets i definitely plan on playing the like the mobile version and um i'm not quite sure if, how different that'll be cuz like there's i imagine there's no way that the mobile game can be like the same as the OG uh, <laughs> neopets experience yeah what i saw from the the beta it's like it's just like a more streamlined version okay. and um 
it's just like less stuff. The interface is more limited. Um, I haven't really played extensively. I just opened it. Today. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but yeah, I think you could still. I mean, it's functioning. It's just not the whole experience. Um, yeah. But I wonder if. Yeah, I also wonder if they could move it to an MMORPG. I don't know. I think it would take years. Like, yeah. To build that infrastructure, which they just oh, don't have. Yeah. Um, You'd almost yeah. have to do like a fresh slate. I. But I. I don't even know. It's such a. It's so hard. Like. I, if you're sitting on that, like, as IP, like, thinking about, like, okay, yeah. what do we do yeah. with this? That's why I'm so proud of Adventure Quest for, like, migrating from, like, you know, a web browser game to this whole MMORPG concert experience with the monsters spawning behind us. <laughs> um, that's, like, really the ideal. And also that game came out around the same time as Neopets. And I would also play that as in school and computer class. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, like, if you're in the chat, we have about five minutes left. If you have questions, get them in now. Um, and oh, if key you're... Quest. Key quest. <laughs> Do you know Key Quest? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like, we, uh, and also, like, Julia, our other friend, like, she's also been talking about Key Quest. Like, it's so, it's such a good strategy game that, like, makes you feel like you're amazing at strategy games because it's just so easy. <laughs> I don't know if it's been easy for everyone. That's, honestly, <laughs> that's my only requirement for a video game is, like, makes you feel amazing at this game. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, I was like, wow, I'm so smart. Like, how come I'm always overthinking, like, outthinking the uh, opponent? I'm like, so it's like you roll dice and then you, like, walk across the map to get bonuses. And then when you win, you get, like, a special code stone uh, to, like, train your Neopet to make it strong enough to take down a Pokemon. Uh, and, and yeah, so it's just, like, a lot of uh, dice rolling and thinking about how to outplay the opponent. Uh, but I don't know why if they removed it. <laughs> why they move yeah Gosh. yeah um let's oh i just just got lost in the chat okay so we have a question um what neopets did you own so <laughs> clarification for the chat i didn't actually grow up playing a ton of neopets but i loved neopets like because they were like pokemon and i had neopets toys so it was kind of this weird thing where like, I didn't play Neopets, but I liked it and was familiar with it. And now, honestly, I would jump at any excuse to get back into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We should totally do that after this. Um, <laughs> Literally <laughs> right after this. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I had the same thing with Tamagotchi, um, where, I, like, I didn't own any, but my friends would. And I would just, like, keep looking at them. Um, but for Neopets, I have a Uni, as I mentioned before. I had a Sweet Talk, which is one of the newer Neopets kind of looks like a squirrel mm -hmm. i painted her the pop star like paintbrush style so she like looks like a pop star ready to go oh no she's no she's cl painted cloud but i dressed her up as a pop star with like really expensive items too um and then i also have a oh. i'm trying to think oh a pirate sweet top um and a while back actually i was curious um we had a question that we didn't get to is like what do you think about the introduction of neo cash Okay, yeah. So that's also another thing that came up like uh, around the time as like Jumpstart was acquiring you Neopets know, and like finding ways to monetize it more. Um, so I definitely did buy a bit of Neo Cash, but people on the site were like, oh, we don't like this direction that the site is going. Like, I think players are always resistant to like monetization of a game anyway. Mm -hmm. So people just didn't like um, that. But I mean, some of it was fun. Like, you could like put a background on your Neopet, like put little like little fairy dell next to them um but i think uh one of the things i tried to buy was like trying to like get like a training pass to make my neopet get trained faster mm. and you still have to manually continue to go back to the training academy anyway using your training pass or it would expire so i was like this is not this website clearly wasn't made for this kind of monetization yeah. and it's not a smooth experience yeah Stable Pie is asking if you ever played the stock market, which I feel like I wonder, you know, thinking about super popular current games like Animal Crossing, if there is any mm -hmm. inspiration drawn from that, like because it doesn't seem like a natural thing to put in a game like, oh, let's put a stock market in a kid's game like but Neopets did that. Yeah, there are a lot of like grown up ish like, ideas inside the game. I think that was might have been we have to check the dates on this mm -hmm. but it could have been either at the same time as animal crossing or before animal crossing okay. 1999 okay. was like you know, that's founding day yeah so i don't think it might have it could have been on its own um but yeah you know a stock market a bank uh a type a plushie tycoon business where you like sell your own plushies like 
it was all there. Uh, and I did play the stock market. I did not make much money. Oh, <laughs> and I actually, so I have a question from Sarah Podzorski, friend of the show, <laughs> who I don't think is in the chat today. Um, okay. Why were the paint, something about the paintbrush economy? Oh, I thought I saw that question. It was um, why why could she never get a paintbrush? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It wasn't that hard to get. <laughs> okay, all right. I I, a paintbrush. All right. I think we're gonna have to do a follow up bonus content here, where we sit yeah. Sarah down and be like, "Hey, actually, like you can get those paintbrushes." Yeah, you just need to save nail points and go to a store and buy them. Like, <laughs> um, com Commander Cool is wondering, and I was thinking this too, um, how was it monetized before Neocash? Was it just ads or were we in this blissful state of not thinking about monetization in early Yeah, comparisons? yeah. I don't, I don't think it was very monetized. There were a couple ads, um, I think. Yeah. And then, I don't know, Neopets just, oh, I mean like the merchandise. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, game, yeah. McDonald's, too partnership so it was it might have been like outdoor stuff mm -hmm. i mean like outside of uh neopets itself but yeah. i also like the way that i found this game is like it was advertised on a bubblegum wrapper inside a deli in <laughs> queens new york and i was like it must have been like so big at the point when i already discovered it in second grade so it was already like yeah uh a profitable franchise back yeah then. well and it's sort of like you think about franchises like or not franchises companies like disney where with their um, characters, like so much of the money is made off of like the toys and the products. So I could easily mm -hmm. imagine like a similar situation with Neopets where they're like, we're not even going to worry that much about making a ton of money on the website because um, because we have yeah. all these toys. But it's interesting. It brings up a good point, though. Like a lot of Neopets was, oh, thanks for the sub casual Friday. Mm -hmm. Um brings up a good point that I a lot of the content is user generated. Um, and so, mm -hmm. you know, for what they're getting out of it, they're probably not putting too much into it. Yeah, the user con uh, generated content. So like when I submit my short story to New Pain Times, I think it does say somewhere in the fine print, like you've signed away your rights to this content. It's <laughs> ours now. Like don't even like come sue us because it's ours. Um, something like that. But uh, so like, people would draw like web comics and mm -hmm. art and, and, and not just like writing, but all of that was for Neopets. Uh, and they would reuse it sometimes um, yeah. in like little galleries. So that also was a way uh, to keep it going. Yeah. Well, and before we end today, like uh, I think that this is sort of tying into the last uh, part of Neopets that's been coming up in chat, which is the card game. Um, I am completely unfamiliar with the Neopets card game. It's like, is it simple to play? I imagine it would have to be if it's a younger audience, even though I guess Pokemon isn't very easy to play. Yeah, so there were two card games I loved, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Neopets uh, card game. And I love Neopets because they would have a little blurb on each card with, like, lore and, like, mm -hmm. something, like, snarky or, like, cool about the character. Um, the mechanics of the card game, I cannot remember now, no, but they were pretty... It was pretty straightforward. Um, and I think there was even, like... Like inside the website, you could play a version of the game, if mm -hmm. I remember, mm -hmm. um, and then also outside in real life. But I couldn't find anyone to play it with, I think. I think I just played it with myself. <laughs> um, I think that's, well, I feel like for me, so many card games I played at that age was literally just to collect them. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then you arrange them and then you, that's like all you do with it yeah yeah the exception is yukio because i could always find someone to oh do all, yeah you know? yeah yeah well and that made a lot of sense and what's great about what was great about yukio is that you can play like i had the game boy game so i could learn with the game boy game or practice with the game boy game and the physical card game mm -hmm. and so like there are multiple opportunities um yeah that's awesome so all right. Um, I think we're we're at the hour now. Is there like anything yeah. else you wanted to talk about before we tie up? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just want to say like it's clear to me that like the chat is full of Neopets fans, yeah. and like yes, Jelly Jelly World exists. If anyone can get that <laughs> reference, um, uh, because like the whole the whole meme is Jelly World does not exist. Um, and and yeah, I'll leave it at that. Webkins don't die. Neopets don't die. Jelly World still exists. <laughs> yeah. um, 
Oh, okay. Actually, if you don't mind, I have one other story that I think like is really fun. Could you share like your, was it the snarky story? Like you were looking for a specific contribute, like writer behind Neopets. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking for Hurdy Gurdy. Okay. So I don't know if you're out there, Hurdy Gurdy, but <laughs> I'm a fan of your work. <laughs> you, write, you write great mysteries and science fiction. I don't know if you still contribute to Neopian Times. I couldn't see anymore. I think the site is not showing your uh, recent work, but you like wrote every single issue for like months, years on end and impressed everybody with like I just like taking the lore of Neopets, but like reimagining them with different characters. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of work to do that because when you submit work to Neopian Times, you don't know when they're going to run it. So you just have to like keep yeah. sending work in, <laughs> hoping that they would like start uh, publishing each issue with your work. And yeah, so I tried to find you, but uh, Hurdy Gurdy is a very private person. All right. Well, this is our, we're going to tie it up with our official call out into the world. If you are Hurdy Gurdy, if you, no hurdy gurdy. If you just have a large audience that you think hurdy gurdy would be a part of, like please ask him to get in contact with Shannon. Um, so that's all for our show today. <laughs> I, uh, Shannon, where can our lovely audience find you and your consistent Neopets, Maple Story, Tamagotchi, all that nostalgia coverage? Yeah, you can find me on CNN Business. So it's actually cnn.com slash business. My byline is there uh, approximately like once a week or, or so. Um, also I'm on Twitter. It's Shannon da- underscore L-I-O. Yeah. And it's thing. just below her um, image right now. So just go ahead. So show <laughs> Shannon some love. Give her a follow. Um, I just like to take a moment to thank the MinMax community um patreon uh, all our patreon supporters for making this content possible thanks to y'all we've like crushed all our milestones so we're able to bring more shows like this in addition to bring on people like leo vader who i am very excited to meet because apparently he's the funniest person in the world um and you can find this in addition to listening now you can in the future find this the podcast version on our patreon feed you can unlock that for five dollar supporters or we will also have a version up on youtube asap usually you know we get it up within a couple of days um and that'll be posted on the min max social channels once that gets up um so thank you to our supporters and um thanks for coming to hang out everyone and thank you to Shannon for coming to talk to us. You're incredible. Yeah, no, thank you for hosting. It's so fun. Your Neopets yeah. knowledge is like completely unparalleled. So <laughs> I honestly, truly like I and the level, like not only have you played it, you've covered it, you've written for Neopets and you've written about it. So thank you so much <laughs> for taking the time today. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is so fun. All right. Let's go play some. <laughs> it was all, yeah. Okay. So yeah. If anyone wants to play Neopets, hit us up. We'll organize a group sometime. So thank you so much, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better. The deepest dive is the best, most thorough discussions about games on the internet. Prove us wrong, please. The MinMax Show podcast airs every Thursday. Patreon supporters vote on what we stream every single week and a whole lot more. Give us a shot. Try subscribing to the YouTube channel, and we hope we can win you over.